welcome back from the break, Rams, and welcome to the first week of Down in the DMs. Now let's get right to it. Matthew Stafford has found a new home in Los Angeles. Who won the trade, you guys, the Rams or the Lions? Ethan, why don't you start us off with this one? Well, let, 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 let's preface this first for a quick second. Stafford to the Rams for two first-round picks in 2022 and 2023, and then a third-round pick in 2021. So it really depends on how you look at this. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Lions win, or excuse me, the Rams are winning the trade right now. Now, but in the future, you might be looking at the Lions and say, oh, they might have stolen Jared Goff there a little bit. Because after this, the Rams will go seven seasons without having a single first-round pick. Yeah, Matthew Stafford, he's, I mean, I think he's one of the most underrated QBs in the NFL. But what happens when he's going to have to retire soon, just like all the other guys. You go seven seasons without a first-round pick, you might find yourself in a worse position. I think you said it pretty perfectly there that the Rams are looking kind of at their present more than they are looking at their future. Um, I would say that the I, I would say that the Rams kind of won this one, um, but more specifically, I would say that Matt Stafford won this one. Mm -hmm. You say that he, he's not got a lot of time in his career left, but I think for him to get out of Detroit and actually have more available targets on his offensive lineup, I think that's a much better situation for him. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Rachel. I mean, LA, they, they really have the pieces to put around Stafford that he did not have in Detroit. And I, I know Detroit's going to get some first rounders, but they're also known for really squandering talent. I mean, just look at Calvin Johnson. <laughs> Dang, you need to put a dig on Megatron there for a second. <laughs> that, 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 that's all said and done, but I mean, they have a new front office now, oh, yeah. and they have a new head coach now in Detroit. So I think, I, I want to, I mean, I'm a big Matthew Stafford guy, but I was even bigger Jared Goff guy. And I may have been pretty wrong about that. I, I mean, back in that, I think it was a 2018 bowl game where, where Cal beat Air Force. He looked like, he looked like the quarterback that he was two years ago that dominated the league. Mm -hmm. So Detroit could, ha could have found a gem and had one of the more lopsided trades this week, which we're not going to talk about. I miss you, Nolan Arenado. Wait, anyway, we're not going to get into that. But um, this, I really think that they could win this trade if Jared Goff continues to perform and they draft well. That's a big if, because I just think that Jared Goff is a little iffy on the field. I think he go, kind of goes back and forth. He has his really bad off days, and if he doesn't have a broken finger during the season, I think that might be a little helpful. All, in, all I'm saying is I would much rather go from Detroit to L.A. than L.A. to Detroit personally. That's fair. <laughs> I won't blame you that. But after a tough start to the Nuggets, sorry, we're going to move on to the next question. Should probably let you guys know about that. <laughs> after a tough start to the season, Nuggets have climbed to the number four st spot in the West. This question comes from my boy, Youngest Baudet on Twitter. Thank you for reaching out. Do Should the Nuggets trade for Bradley Beal? What are we thinking? I think they should absolutely trade for Bradley Beal. Why wouldn't they want someone who's a top scorer to go very well with Murray and Jokic. Yeah, I think uh, Bradley Beal d desperately needs to get out of Washington. I think uh, arguably they are the worst team in the league right now. I mean, they're at the bottom of the Eastern Conference with a 4-12 and record. I think that he definitely needs a team that he can build with. And going to the, the Nuggets, I think that could be really good for him, honestly. I think that he could have much more help <laughs> offensively. I mean, you already talked about it, Rose. He's one of the top scorers in the league. He is the top scorer in the league, averaging 35 points a game. I mean, that's just incredible. He needs a team to support him. He can't do it all himself. You know, as much as, you know, Bradley Beal on the Nuggets is a dream. It's really any <laughs> basketball player's dream. And he could be that, that third key that Michael Porter Jr. hasn't quite become yet. However, the big problem is in just about any package for Bradley Beal is going to have MPJ in it. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, MPJ is untouchable. MPJ is one of the, after Jokic, is probably one of the most important players on the Nuggets for the future. I mean, he missed a month due to COVID, came back, and he dropped 20 points. MPJ is too special to give up for Bradley Beal. What I would say instead, Gary Harris and Will Barton, as much as, as sentimental as they are for the Nuggets, they helped build this playoff contending team. They're, I don't think that they're very big assets to this team anymore, and at times, they drag them back. So maybe a Derrick Rose trade would be better than Bradley Beal. 
<laughs> well, we'll just mm. have to see. Who knows? Yeah. Well, not better than Bradley Beal, but more realistic. <laughs> than I should I should redact. Okay, that. that's more like it. <laughs> Finally, this is one of the best seasons in CSU men's basketball history. What are the odds they go dancing in March? I don't know. I think that after this, uh, they, they, I think that after they couldn't complete the sweep against Boise, which they very much needed for the end of the season. I think it's kind of all up in the air, but I mean, there's still a lot of conference to play to go. So you never know what's going to happen to the top place right now. I mean, you never know what's going to happen to Utah State. You never know what's going to happen to Boise. So we'll just have to see. If they can keep their turnovers to a low, I think that'll be good. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, they've just been pretty sloppy lately, but they do have the easiest schedule left mm -hmm. in the Mountain West. Absolutely. I mean, they're playing the bottom half of the league. Wyoming, U University of New Mexico, Nevada, Air Force, who are a combined 13 and 32 in the Mountain West. If they go perfect, they could find themselves <laughs> in the tournament. And well, that is all the time that we have for tonight. We are looking forward to another great semester. I'm Ethan Byrne. And I'm Rachel Hallam. Make sure to tune in tomorrow night for Ellison Hubbard's first show since last spring. Lastly, I'm Rose Carter. Follow us on sports underscore CTV on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on CSU athletics all week long. Good night, Rams. <laughs>